Hello everybody and welcome back to the final day of the E3 coverage. Maybe some of it will run into tomorrow Sunday, but as we said last night, it is the final day yesterday. All of the doors are closed and everybody's gone home. And Bubsy ended off E3 with allowing us to buy his iconic warning sign exclamation mark t-shirt. Wasn't that nice? Yes, it was. So... There was a lot of games that got released at this E3, like an absolute ass ton. There's a few more specific ones that I do want to talk about, but some of them I'm actually just going to grab out of the chest. I'm just going to throw all these away, because I'm going to grab a few more out of the chest, and this is going to be called, as you can tell by the title, and the rest. So, all of the games that were looking interesting but didn't have enough content to go into a full video like odyssey where, wherever it is odyssey we can go into a full video sea of thieves versus the skull and bones we can go into a full video but things like kirby it was just a one minute trailer i mean it was nice there was a couple of things that we could show but there ain't really enough for a full video so it'll just be like and the rest yoshi had a lot that's got a lot to talk about that has skyrim mods and no man's sky i definitely want to do um the final crash i do because it's coming out next week shadow of the colossus remake that's a remake uh super lucky tales well i'll yeah we could probably talk about that and um yeah, maybe this is this. These are all going to be and the rest. So everything in here. These are like the remaining five or six. How many is the seven, eight? These are the remaining eight that we need to do across the course of today and tomorrow. But for now, we are just going to cue the su the Super Mario Brothers two music, and we're just going to go through these snap, 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 one by one in quick succession because there just wasn't enough for a full video. So. Without, with that being said, let's get into it, shall we? Cue the music. The Artful Escape is looking pretty darn creative. There's no sense of how to play it yet, nor any kind of release date, but with this weird ass man jumping across what looks like 1970s, 1980s, music cover albums it reminds me of like the music video from the Beatles Lucy in the sky with diamonds with like all these weird heads Yeah, so that's looking interesting. I really do want to see what that is yet next year. So yeah, Artful Escape, you're looking pretty good. Evil Within 2, it's got a freaky weird trailer. Like, aside from going to the milk dimension every two seconds, there was no gameplay, no release date, and no description. And, you know, I played the first one and it wasn't that good, so... Eh, whatever. Dishonored 2 DLC. Dishonored 2 was not too bad, and the DLC certainly looks somewhat interesting, but it's just kind of like more Dishonored 2. And while Dishonored 2 wasn't that bad, it wasn't really blowing the roof off, so again, eh. Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind. We had a full description saying that all of Morrowind will now be playable in the Elder Scrolls Online, thus expanding Tamriel a little bit more. I don't really know who plays Elder Scrolls Online that much anymore. A lot of people tried it and they said World of Warcraft is still the dominant king when it comes to memoir figures and any kind of online interaction in that type of genre, while Elder Scrolls is certainly improving itself day by day to rival that of World Warcraft. It's still not quite raw Warcraft, but I could see a few people that probably get enjoyment, but for myself, again, it was, it was okay. Nothing that special to me. Wolfenstein 2. Bad. Just bad. 
So why is it bad, Spyro? Why have you put it in the bad chest? Because it's another bloody shooter with Nazis in it. We've got Call of Duty World War Two, where we shoot bloody Nazis. We've got Wolfenstein, where we shoot bloody Nazis. I get it. Like, I understand Wolfenstein, and maybe it should get put in the meh chest, but it's starting to drain to the point where it's not even funny anymore. Like, Wolfenstein is an okay series with okay shooting mechanics, certainly far better than Call of Duty's shooting mechanics. So, it's a lot better, but the fact that we've got World War II, we're fighting Nazis, we've got Wolfenstein 2, we're fighting Nazis, we've got all the million, billion, trillion shooting games in the past saying uh, kill zone kill zone where we're fighting space nazis we've got so many games where we're fighting nazis it's just not original it's not funny it's not clever anymore it's really grating stop with world war fucking 2 and nazis it's done okay nazis are done the premise is dead it's dead it's fucking dead stop it like Kill the Nazis in, I'll tell you what Wolfenstein, I'll put you in the mare chest, but kill the Nazis in this second one, and in the third one, move the fuck on because nobody cares about the shooting of Nazis in games anymore, it's been done to fucking death. But if number three has Nazis in, no, you're just automatically bad, you might even deserve the Call of Duty treatment where we just discard you into the fire pit. Just Dance 2018, the joke was it was on the Wii. Ha ha ha! Ha ha! That's still a relevant console, right? Ha! We released it on the Wii. The Wii. That, that, everybody still has a Wii. Every, everyone still plays a Wii. Every, everyone's got a Wii, hasn't they? No. That was, that was the one joke. But other than that, it's Just Dance again and it's kind of bad. <laughs> South Park The Fractured Butthole is now having a release date finally after so much time so many years oh my god is it gonna get delayed again matt and trey are you gonna delay it again i think you could delay it again they won't it has got a release date now and it's looking great it's looking amazing it looks exactly like the stick of truth did it plays probably like a better version of stick of truth from what i can see uh, it's got a lot more powers and it's focused, I mean, because it's superpowers, it's not fancy, it's not magic, we know, I'm gonna call it magic for the sake of argument, but it does seem to focus a lot more on the magic based system, which is great, and it, it looks good, it's looking fantastic, so there you go, South Park, you're going the good chest, that was, no, that was Spider-Man, where the hell's South Park? Speaking of Spider-Man, that's the one we're going to do next. I don't think it's going to be all that good. It looks kind of shit, to be honest. All the way through it, as we bring it up on screen now, and you're watching the footage, all the way through the Spider-Man video, while it's very nice and you've got the web slinging and the graphics and all the nice stuff, it was absolutely littered to, to the eyeballs with quick time events. There's a quick time event. There's a quick time event. There's a quick time event. Are oh, you shooting webs? Like so LR, 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 super quick time events. It looks like quick time evented to balls, and that just kind of kills it for me. So it's going in the bad chest. God of War 4, it's looking like more God of War. I get you got a child, but you're throwing an axe, you're being the unstoppable badass Kratos, and you're slaying all of the demons without a care in the world. And while it is just senseless button mashing, it does seem like this particular one is going to fa focus a little bit more on the story with the fact that you have a child with you who is apparently your son, and um, the son is cursed, maybe, because he can... The lady says he's cursed, and then he can talk to that big world snake thing at the end. But either way, the visuals look absolutely stunning. The gameplay looks just as good as all of the other go Gears. I'm saying Gears. God of War, if not better. And the overall aesthetic and presentation of the game that they showed off in their, in their little... Um, demo level is looking fantastic and you've certainly got me interested in buying it so that one goes into the good chest
Horizon Frozen Wild. I'm uh, I'm on the fence about this. I'm going to certainly enjoy Horizon Frozen Wild. It's going in the good chest for me because I played Horizon. It was okay. I kind of it's a, it's kind of like an okay to good, and I did enjoy my time with Horizon, and I did. And get used to some of the things that I could say were questionable in Horizon. Hopefully they fix those particular issues that I had. Go watch the Horizon review for that because we've got to go through all of these really quickly. But anyway, hopefully it fixes a few of the issues. But in that review, I showed off two particular areas where you could not get access to. One was this one right here. Let's play the clip where I actually enter the Frozen Wilds DLC area where there was absolutely no monsters because they didn't spawn because the DLC was not in yet and it kept trying to boot me out but I managed to get through the invisible walls because maybe there might be a few bugs like these buildings it says can't go that way but if it's an area that is not buggy clearly in the game and could clearly be accessed it throws you back via you are leaving the play area box. Now from the live stream travels, we only ever found two areas where two things go on at the exact same time. That being the Whirlpool and Machine City where it says can't enter because the entire ocean might be a bit buggy, but a reset if you are too close to it. As in that Whirlpool is finished and ready but don't go there yet but maybe the crocos are spawning there for a reason that's the entrance and you can swim through them so after all the forces of evil that lurk in the briny blue are dead and their gleaming flesh has been harvested the entrance is ma- oh uh oh they just respawned they, they just popped back into existence but even braving the crocos to find the entrance, it says can't enter. Only close to the whirlpool, the true finished area is where we are forced to reset. So, that's where the entrance is. And it's even more so, as that one little hole where it says reset is the only hole in the entire ocean that says reset. You can swim all the way to the land to the left and all the way to the land to the right and you know this glitchy building is on the right so we can swim the majority of the ocean can't enter but that one tiny hole next to the whirlpool that you can clearly enter and is where you could clearly get into a fully finished whirlpool now that's the reset that's the door but you're not allowed to go through the door yet and you'll probably guess the reason when we explain machine city same with Machine City, from faraway places, or oh, you can't go there, but if you find the hole in the invisible barrier, you find some so much for being very interesting things. An area much like the far lands of Minecraft, a place of silence where no monsters can spawn. It's a complete area, and you can walk around it. There's a bridge, climbing rocks, rope, it's all here. But, even if you pass through the barrier, you can't go towards Machine City itself. As once you start getting closer towards the main part of Machine City, turn back, or you'll be reset. Why only there? Then you work it out. Just look back at all my footage of these borders. The enemies and resources beyond the barriers, areas complete but devoid of monsters and people, the two big mystery areas like the random whirlpool out in the middle of nowhere locked off. Rather specific thing to lock off, a random whirlpool out in the middle of the ocean on the very far reaches of the map that very few would ever see, that's a very oddly specific thing to lock off. Well, not so much when you think about all the outside sources. Look at this month. Breath of the Wild, Zelda's biggest ever game, garnering 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 4 out of 5, which coincidentally is also about robots 
in a post-apocalyptic future. Near Automata, again, another open world about the post-apocalypse and robots generating positive vibes. And Ghost Recon Wildlands, another open world. Then go back to the hype train, the trailers. We saw Aloy climbing everything like Link could. The talks of a world bigger than imagination, like bigger than Breath of the Wild sized. But with all these walls and you're leaving the play area, you'll be reset. You're lucky if it's bigger than Fallout 4, and I think Fallout 4 is bigger. But, I mean, Horizon would be bigger than Fallout 4, even bigger than Zelda, if there weren't these reset barriers, if we could go to all these places, if it was a world without borders or boundaries. But, we had to put them in for now, as we had to shove it out early, to compete with Zelda and Nier. And even when you compare it to Nier Automata and the way that Nier Automata is structured, Nier's barriers are structured like Zelda's barriers. There is a limit, but it's not an immersion breaking box with more behind it. No, with both Zelda and Nier, games finished on time, once you hit the map limit, there is an end of play area, yes, but there's no box, just an invisible wall with a really small message saying it can't go that way. But more or less, it's just an ocean or an impassable mountain, like really impassable. And in both, you will get a few minor can't go that way messages, but not a reset. However, unlike Zero Dawn, there are ways through, and if the player can pull a Spyro 1, you know what I'm talking about, Stone Hill and Cliff Town, where there are these invisible walls, but ooh, bit of fancy manoeuvring, and I'm in the Outlands. Like Spyro 1, if the player can surmount the walls and break through the barriers, you are rewarded for your efforts with the remnants and remains of the somewhat programmed match. It's glitchy and buggy, as you can see from some of this footage that another YouTuber recorded for us, but it's still there, and you are still free to explore to your heart's content. Go as far as you can, and if you can navigate the non-rendered floors and the buggy buildings, there it is, the end of the map, the world's end for you to bask in. You broke through, and so you get to see what lies beyond the horizon. <laughs> but horizon, there's none of that. As you've seen from Machine City and the Whirlpool, even if you get past the invisible wall, oh, naughty naughty, you're leaving the play area, time to get reset and sent back. You can see it, and that's your lot. Wait for the season pass, bitches. And you know, that's what it is. While Gorilla has been very vague about the whole thing, there has been mention of them by Gorilla's, like, spokesperson, that a season pass is coming, and now we know what for. Yeah, how the map gets randomly cut off like this, despite there being more beyond? Well, yeah, you can buy the rest of the map in the season pass. The Whirlpool? Got that reset barrier around it? Mmm, season pass will remove that. Oh, same for Machine City. Wanna go right up to the city itself and not just fuck around in Tentacle Park close to the city? Season pass! And it fucking kills it for me. Unlike Zelda or Skyrim, where the game is 100% complete and in a 100% state, and they're working on the DLC afterwards and then that gets added on as an extra bit of the map. The way the world map randomly cuts off here and areas like Machine City, they're clearly there, they're clearly finished, but they're behind the reset wall and they've just been carved out. You know, if you could remove that reset wall, you could go right up to that city, you could walk around in that city, but you would just have to carve that out 
for some uh, shitty little season pass later down the line. Because we could not test it in time, because we had to push it out in the unfinished state it is to contend with Zelda and Nia. All three games, all three open world, all three with robots, all three about a post-apocalyptic future. But both already have games. A lot ha One has a lot of games and extremely well-established franchises. You wanted to compete with Zelda? Like, really? Like, really, Horizon? You're a new franchise, fresh out the box, with no following, and you want to compete with a 30-year-old franchise? Well, I mean, good luck to you, you mad bastard. Well, not so much good luck. As you rushed it out a bit because there was already two robot future post-apocalyptic open world games already out there in the form of Breath of the Wild and Nia, and you feared that you might get left behind. And look how that turned out. And while you might have got a bit of flack, it would have been so much better if you just waited. Or, at the very least, even just removed them shitty immersion breaking, you're leaving the play area boxes. Well, you didn't, did you? So, yes, I can't, I wonder where the Frozen Wilds is going to take place. It's kind of scummy that that DLC has been done for ages and your entire little section of the map has been done for ages, yet you refuse to just upload it as a full complete package. So I'm very cynical that you have just sliced a chunk of the gameplay off to be sold as DLC later, because that area is clearly DLC, or that area is clearly part of the world that you sliced off the DLC by making nothing spawn there, you dicks. But, if it is a reasonable price, like £10, then maybe I'll consider it. But it was still a very scummy thing to do, but I did like Horizon, so you're going in the good chest. Days Gone. Excuse me. Days Gone. I think you all know where this one's going. It's a bad game. It's just another fucking zombie game. Like, again, the same with the Wolfenstein thing, except this one gets no love because Nazis are overdone, but Wolfenstein has a bit of a following, and I have played the Wolfenstein games. Days Gone? Nah, dude. Nah. You're another fucking zombie game. Like Seven Days to Die. Like Left for Dead. Like Day Z. Like the million, billion, trillion other first person survival horror shooters with zombies in. Shall we, shall the list go on? Day, the actual, um, Day Z asset flip. Um, unit, sorry, that's Unit Z. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's been so, so many first person survival horror games that are shooters that also have zombies in. Resident Evil! There's, there's been so many silent hills from, for a little bit of it, you know, some of them are zombies, but you are not particularly shooting, but it's still got, like, first person survival horror with zombies and guns in. There's that been that many first person survival horror games with shooting guns and zombies in that it's been done to fucking death and I cannot stand to see another fucking zombie. Stop with the zombie games. Nobody likes them. Stop it. Monster Hunter Worlds. I'm just gonna stick this in the meh chest. Like, I don't like Monster Hunter. Blasphemy, I know. I mean, I played Monster Hunter Try, where I tried to become a hunter of monsters, and it didn't appeal to me, and people said that was the worst one for me to try, and that's one that isn't like Monster Hunter at all. It's absolutely terrible. So maybe I'd give it another go, but, you know, I, as I say, I tried Monster Hunter Try, I tried to get into it, like, I, I got the idea, kill the monsters, use their body parts to upgrade your swords, fight Rathalos. Rathalos is pretty cool looking, and as is all of the other actual big monsters, but the 
length of going to get to the big monsters, you know, killing all the small ones, it takes too long. And I was just like, I'm, I'm trying, I'm really trying, I'm trying to get into your game, but you're making it very hard, and by the end of it, it's just like, I can't. I've been here for like six hours, killing nothing but deers and little dinosaurs. I've not seen, or sorry, I saw the one underwater monster, and he said I wasn't ready to fight it, and I've been here for another five hours, and I've still not, like, even had an attempt at a medium-sized monster. I'm not asking to fight Rathalos or a big one. Just give me a medium-sized one. Give me a giraffe or an elephant-sized one. You know, something of middling difficulty. But nah, we still gotta kill the worms in the worm cave and all of the little sparrows and shit. So I, c I couldn't get into Monster Hunter. And again, Monster Hunter Try is apparently the worst one. And I shouldn't judge the entire Monster Hunter series on Try because it's the worst one. But, and, and that's why I'm not pointing it in the bad chest, because it's like, eh, uh, I, it's, it's not my cup of tea, but maybe if some other people buy it, and maybe I'll give it another go, and maybe that's the Monster Hunter that will get me into Monster Hunter, but for now, it's, it's just an average game for me. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity. I'm not into Marvel vs. I'm not into any fighting games. Fighting games really bore me. But Marvel vs. Capcom has usually been slightly interesting. And Midnight played the demo of this and said it's really, really good. And it's got like some fluent fighting mechanics as well as an okay story. But it automatically goes into the bad chest though. Because they missed one of the most important things in the entire Marvel vs. Capcom series. And I think it's an absolute, it's absolute blasphemy and a crime. Capcom or Marvel. I'm gonna blame you Capcom because it's your character, but I'm gonna it's an absolute crime blasphemy that you did not Include in your thing like you got Mega Man. Oh my god photon photon's gonna go crazy that Mega Man and X and Sigma in there like you you've got some characters, but absolute bullshit 0 out of 10 you didn't include Felicia Bad game won't buy. You need to. You better have Felicia in. You better have Felicia in the full version, not as DLC. The full base version for the time this comes out, or it's a bad. It's just always going to be a bad game. Zero out of ten. Hashtag no Felicia. She's my favourite. If you can't tell. Anthem Part 2, it looks like Horizon Zero Dawn and it's an open world, we're gonna, you're gonna see a lot of these by the way, it's an open world set in the future where humanity has been laid to ruin and nature has reclaimed the world and there is mutants and robots roaming round the land that you've got to kill to review, rebuild humanity. Oh good, we haven't seen that before, Horizon Zero Dawn, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Near Automata, and so on. So I can't care for it. Metro Exodus. It's, an op it's a giant open world set in the ruins of humanity after humanity has been destroyed by a nuclear war. And in the future, humanity is little more than a speck and you've got to go through the wild fighting robots and all other manner of mutated beasts in the future to rebuild humanity. Because we haven't seen that before, Breath of the Wild, Horizon Zero Dawn, Near Automata, Anthem, and now this and every other fucking thing. So once again, I'm not interested in Metro whatsoever. Because, can you, can you sense a pattern? This pattern's not over. Can you sense these open world patterns? Alright, Shadow of War, also known as Shadow of Mordor 2. It's a big open world where humanity, oh fuck me. It's a big open world where humanity has been pretty much killed by Sauron and the Orcs. And now as the White Lord, 
You've got to capture orcs to try and kill Sauron and rebuild Middle Earth slash humanity. And guess what else? Even though it's a fantasy game, even though it's set in Middle Earth, guess what else? That's right! There's robots in it. Not quite robots, but cyborgs. So now when you kill an orc, sometimes that orc, as you can see here, can come back as a robot. Open world, Scarlet. It's a, it's a big open world. They're making it bigger. Like me into what I am. You did. You created the machine. Great. So it's another open world. It's another giant open world set in the ruins of humanity, where humanity is little more than a speck. And you, as the protagonist, must journey across the open world as the White Lord, killing robot orcs, because the fucking Middle Earth needed robot orcs, but killing robot orcs and bad stuff in order to kill Sauron and retake the future for yourself. Okay, there's three. I can't put it in the bad chest though because they have improved on a lot of stuff from Shadow of Mordor. Like the orcs do have more personality, but oh my god, can we just stop with this open world ruins of humanity where you have to fight some sort of mechanical beast and other wilds? Bullshit! I, I can't take anymore. Please, I speak. <laughs> Speaking of which... <laughs> Speaking of which... Assassin's Creed is set in a huge open world where the Templars are in control and you as the assassin have to free humanity- Fuck you! Fuck off! Please, AAA, no more open fucking worlds. I mean, Egypt one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, give a quick flick. I'm gonna put this in the good chest, because the Egypt one does actually look a lot better. Like, I'm really, like, kind of looking forward to the, the Egypt one, because I kind of like all the stuff from Egypt. But, dude, just, just stop with the open worlds. Enough, 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 enough. No more open worlds. No more. Oh, Xenoblade Chronicles is set in the future in a giant open world where humanity must. Leave Earth, because Earth was destroyed, I think, and they must fight robots and other wildlife in a giant open world in the future to reach Elysium, where they can rebuild humanity, because we haven't heard... We haven't heard this description before of a giant open world set in the future where you fight robots and other mutated animals in order to reclaim humanity from the brink of destruction. Breath of the Wild, Horizon Zero, Dawn, Metro, Exodus, Anthem, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Near Automata. And I don't care for it. <laughs> I really don't. I mean, and also, like, I played Xenoblade Chronicles X. There was so many bullshit, like, menus to go through. I'm, I'm just not excited for Xenoblade. And as you can tell from what, from the description, I... <laughs> as you can tell from the description, the descriptions of each one of these games, are you noticing a pattern with AAA? Let's move on. Far Cry 5 is set in a rundown, open fucking world where some cult is killing black people in a state in America and you must run round a giant open world to save the state from the cult, to save the state from the ruins of its own humanity. Oh, just, just fuck. No, 
Because we've got a fucking hard-on for open worlds. Everything must be open world now. Fucking every- make everything open world. You know what? I'm gonna make a new game. Next fucking game. Next, next fucking game. Right, 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 right. Next fucking game. Uh, Ori. Ori's open world. I want an open world Ori. I want an open world Kirby. I want an open world Yoshi. Give me open- I want an open world Overwatch. Everything's gotta be open world. And I don't care for it. And Far Cry already wore out its welcome with Primal and 4, because Primal was just a reskin of the 4's map. Just... Enough! Why have you got to make one, like, every two years? You're over And the fact that it's another fucking open world this year. O open worlds are so oversaturated this year. I like a couple of open worlds, but all of these in one year is too fucking much. I get it, you're all copying Breath of the Wild's fame and fortune, but you shouldn't be copying Breath of the Wild. Ugh! Oh, Spyro, you seem very emotional. Maybe you maybe you would like a job in one of my games. I can render you with over 5,000 little polygons because you have so many emotions. From anger to sadness, your face tells us so many questions. Who is he? Where is he going? And will he ever get his HD remakes? Probably not because Activision is a dick to him. But that is so many different right wide arrays of fucking emotion that you would be perfect for the David Cage emotional movie video game experience. And what is the David Cage movie video game experience this year? Well this year you will be in the New York City and in the in the emotional New York City it will be an open fucking world city! Sorry, I got a little bit emotional. I'm David Cage, but it will be a fucking open world city where you will be playing kind of like Watch Dogs or Grand Theft Auto, where you will be running around the giant open world city and doing missions in order to free your fellow androids while you also fight fucking androids because it's set in the future where androids are hating the fact that they are slaves to humans so um, humanity is becoming a burning pit of chaos mm, I wonder if you've ever heard this story before sorry there was way too much emotion in my voice there I'm David Cage and uh, from all these emotions, <laughs> fucking, of course it must be, it must be put on a pedestal. It must be, it must be put on a pedestal to show how much of a fucking emotional video, movie game, video experience it is. Because it is, um, it's not even, it's not even a video game. It is a, it's not even a video game. It is a um, movie, a video game experience. Which makes it much more than any other video game ever made. So thank you, that's that's, uh, that's my thing. It's not like it's not like Spyro. It's not like Spyro with all of those emotions that I'm praising him about would ever put it in the bad chest because it's just another it's just another one of my pretentious bullshit video games. It's certainly not a bad game. Oh no no, Spyro Spyro would never put it in. Spyro would never put uh, my game, David Cage game, into the bad chest, <laughs> even though my game, my bullshit games get um, released before his HD remakes because uh, Activision thinks he's a piece of shit, but uh, uh, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. Uh, thank you, thank you all, I will hand it back to uh, Spyro with his emotions. Uh, I'm David Cage. Destiny 2! <laughs> Can you guess? Can you guess? Can you guess where it takes place? That's right, in the future. Can you guess what you'll be fighting? That's right, robots. Can you guess what, what the maps are? That's a lie. You're close, the kind of open world, but not really. But Destiny 2. I know people are absolutely hyped 
as balls for Destiny 2. Everybody's really looking forward to Destiny 2. They have improved so, so much over the first one, and all of the problems from the first one have been pretty much ironed out, so everybody's uh, pretty excited for it, but to me, it's, it's not appealing to me. It's just another online shooter. Not that that's a bad thing, but I've, again, I said this in the other online shooters, you, you don't have time to play them all. I said this about Star Wars Battlefront 2. A lot of people are hyped for it, but it's in the meh chest again because uh, it, it doesn't really excite me. I've, I've picked my two, which are Overwatch and Paladins, and that's, that's where the time is going to leveling up to open boxes, and that's where if there's a special event or if I've got some extra money lying around, that's where the money goes to buying loot boxes. Not that I actually buy that many ever, but you know what I mean. Like, the time and the money go into Paladins and Overwatch. I have selected my two shooters, and I there's no room for a third online shooter in, in my world. Because I've still got lots of other games to play, but I can see why people are really excited for it. Graphics looks good. Uh, the gameplay, again, looks a lot better than the first one. The characters are far more interactive and expressive. So I'm, I'm happy for you Fancy, because I know Fancy Incantation loves the shit out of Destiny, so I'm happy for you Fancy, I'm glad that you're getting your Destiny 2 that you wanted, uh, unlike me that's not getting a HD remake, but yeah, I'm glad that you got the, the, the sequel, the FIXED sequel that you were hoping for and wanted, so good there, but it's, it's just not something for me. Fire Emblem Heroes. Again, this is just a, a meh title for me, like, I'm not that much into Fire Emblem and it's not something that appeals to me because, like, I've, I've played a few Fire Emblem games and don't get me wrong, the Fire Emblem games I've played are really good, but a Fire Emblem Heroes, and I did like Hyrule Warriors, I love the shit out of Hyrule Warriors, just like I love the, the shit out of a lot of the Dynasty Warriors games. But I, I, with Hyrule Warriors, I had that connection. Like, with Hyrule Warriors, I had all of the characters known. When Midna appeared, I'm like, oh shit, it's Midna, that's awesome. When Fi appeared, oh shit, it's Fi, that's awesome. When all these characters, I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm actually uh, kind of disappointed that Groose didn't appear. I was waiting to hear the Groose Slam team because Groose is the best Zelda character ever created. I mean, that's actually not true anymore because of, like, the future and if we can time travel, can you please put Ravali Senpai in Hyrule Warriors? Can you, like, travel backwards through time and give Ravali Senpai, like, he is the sneak peek to the Breath of the Wild that's not released yet because this is in the past, but yeah. But anyway, I, I, I connect with Zelda. I connect with Hyrule Warriors. Fire Emblem... It looks great, it looks like another Dynasty Warriors game, it's going to play like a Dynasty Warriors game, it's going to be great, but that's about all I can say because I'm not that big into the Fire Emblem series. Like, watching that trailer, I knew Marth, I knew Lucina, who's not even in the trailer, and I know the female Corin because she's like a dragoness, or she can turn into a dragoness, but beyond that, I don't know who those kids are, I don't know who this man is. And I don't know who this red-haired man is. I mean, he's the guy from Pokemon uh, X and Y. He's like the leader of Team Flare with the red spiky hair. But aside from that, I don't know who any of these people are. They're talking about an evil, a good dragon blessed the land and an evil dragon's trying to destroy it. But what the fuck's going on? What's going on? I don't know what's going on. So for all the Fire Emblem fans, again, like Fantasy, I'm very happy that it did actually uh, get acknowledged and um, greenlit by Nintendo, like Nintendo give Koi Techno the rights to use the Fire Emblem characters, so I'm very happy for you that it got acknowledged and greenlit, and I'm sure you're, all you Fire Emblem fans are going to have great fun, but for me, I'm not into the series, so I don't know who the characters are, so it's it's not going to, to be my bag and my bag baby. Super Lucky Tail. So, Super Lucky Tail is... <laughs> well... Super Lucky Tail was at the Microsoft conference. And, uh, Super Lucky Tail is... You know... 
just a, just a little, just a little bit. Hmm, looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? Uh, let's see. So it's a colourful cartoon protagonist, and it's a collectathon. You're running around a little map, collecting a lot of collectibles, 3D map, of course, and to get into these maps, you jump into special magic tomes. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, I'm not sure. I don't know where I've seen that before. I don't, um, ooh, ooh, I'm not. I'm not too sure where I've seen that one before. It's. Uh, it's got to be original idea, right, Microsoft? That's a, that's an original idea, right, Microsoft? The the whole jumping into books to collect things with a with a colourful cartoon protagonist. I mean, it's it couldn't. It totally couldn't be that when you saw the success of some of your former employees and you realised just how profitable that game was, those dollar signs didn't light up in your eyes. You totally didn't copy that, right, Microsoft? You didn't try and cash in on the fact that you fucked up, right, Microsoft? So anyway, I just checked my time. And we're at 36 minutes, and by the time I edit this together with some of the clips, it's probably going to be about 45 minutes. So this will be and the rest part one, and then we'll do and the rest part two in the next one, just to give us some sort of consistency. So thank you all for watching. I'm not going to make you sit here any longer but thank you all for watching if you did indeed enjoy this video do feel free to leave a like down below it does help out do let me know what your thoughts on all the games i covered are um if there's anything in particular you agree with or disagree with i'll be happy to know i'll be happy to listen and comment to you accordingly but we're we're going way too long into this particular one and if we did all of them we'd be here for an hour so we'll just end this one here and then you'll just have two to make it a lot more digestible but so leave your thoughts on all of the other and the rest games down below and if there's something that you're excited for or something that you don't care about as well and of course if you don't want to miss out on the rest of the E3 coverage that will be coming across today and tomorrow now that E3 is over do make sure to hit that subscribe button and bing the bell so the subscribers uh, the subscribe videos actually come through because YouTube is broken and we're up to nine as I say we're up to 900 subscribers only a hundred away from that first big milestone which is really great and I really do appreciate you all for it and of course there are links down below to my Twitter to see what I'm doing right now the public discord if you want to come in and chat with everybody else and a patreon if you'd like to support me further but for now thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you in and the rest part two